I got upset and I told my lawyer I wanted to sue the city. Oh, and my wow. lawyer said, Margo has a pretty dumb idea. I have a little secret for you. Come in here. Down here. So if you take a look, Ooh. DT is seven feet tall. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm seven feet here. It's like... Namaskar, this is Aditya Soma, and today I'm here at one of my friend's property. He purchased this home which had an extra lot, and now he served it. He sold that property. He pretty much have this lot for free, and he made some extra money, and he's building a huge student rental. So, let's go meet him see the property find out all the details what's the rent what's the you know construction cost which location what strategies and all those things so stick with me come check out If you're asking that is student rental still alive in Windsor, look what he did. Yeah, like he literally have the pictures and got the property rented. Actually, let's touch on this. So even my existing portfolio, I don't really do in-person showings, like ever. Like okay. all of my portfolio, I usually rent it virtually. Uh, so it's really important that you guys make sure you do professional photos, yeah. I guide tour and things like that. It just honestly, I'm lazy. I live in Windsor. <laughs> I just don't want to do the showing. So just virtually, uh, yeah. if they want it, they want it. Demand is really high. So, so you just need to give a, a good vision. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love it. Love Floor it. plans is big and then photos or renderings is, is big too if you can do it. All right, so what we're walking into right here, guys, is gonna be the kitchen living room setup. Uh, so this is gonna be big, all of its uh, quartz countertops and everything like that, a big kitchen island, stainless steel appliances. Over there, uh, if you wanna point the camera down there, that's gonna be a built-in fireplace as well with TV stand. It's gonna be nice and good looking. So just one bedroom right there, kinda so you can see a standard size room. This is one bathroom that's going to be shared for these two tenants. So how many bedrooms in this main floor? Two bedrooms, one bath on the main floor. Okay. And uh, second floor? Second floor is four beds, two baths. Wow. So this is just kind of a standard size room. So we always try to sneak in the closets behind the um, bathroom there just to save space. But the smallest bedroom is like 140 square feet. So really good size rooms. Yeah. Uh, and, and is the basement legal unit? Yes. Yeah. So it, literally you have a separate unit in the basement. Separate unit. We'll show you on the outside too. It has all separate meters and everything like that. So I'll show you guys that. So technically it's a duplex. Yes. Yeah. But on the papers it's ADU. ADU. Yeah. yeah. So actually <laughs> if you look up the city, if you type in 388 bridge, it'll come up even through the city unit one, unit two. So it's it's already been classified that way. Perfect. If you want, show uh, show the HVAC room too. Uh, oh, wow. You go from the entrance, but pretty squeezed in in a yeah you don't want to waste too much space with the HVAC you don't have to right but yeah because so, in student rental like the every space does matter because it yeah. can create you another extra at least uh, five six hundred dollars definitely yeah okay. if you guys want to follow me we'll pop upstairs all right, so right here where we're at, guys, right now is actually my favorite room. It's the master bedroom. This room is the most ridiculous sized room you've ever seen. Um, if you just want to take even a look around here. So this one's about 160, 170 square feet. One thing, guys, that I really, really recommend doing, if you can, Ethernet ports in the actual unit. So you'll see this blue box right here. Every so single it? bedroom is going to have its private Ethernet connection so they can plug in their laptop right into the Internet connection. So we always give them the top quality Internet. But just the odd time everybody's streaming a movie and they need to do an interview, especially with Zoom becoming more popular now, make sure they have this. You will never get an internet complaint. Wow. And less complaints is good for us. I actually didn't think from that point of view. Um, I haven't seen it? any internet in any house. Yeah, well, because if it's generally a pre existing, one, right? every single room has this. No, no, generally. Yeah. The most of the houses one that of we have seen yeah. one. But so one of the benefits of doing a new build is you get to customize it. So this is designed for the student built pretty much by a student. I mean, I've been graduated for two <laughs> years. But so the things that really matter you can do, like this, for example, cost me probably an extra $2,000 to run ethernet ports in every single bedroom. And it's just such a quality difference for the so tenant. Right? What are the other features that you think uh, for a house like this, mm -hmm. for a specifically designed for students, students would need? Yeah, so the main thing with students is bed bathrooms per bedrooms, right? Okay, so, so how many bedrooms and how many bathrooms? So what I do is each two bedrooms will share one bathroom. So mm -hmm. every two bedrooms will share one bathroom if it's a big six like this, uh, another development I'm doing on Randolph, uh, which is a much bigger development than this one, I actually did mostly en suites as well. So wow. a lot of them will just have private baths. That's ideal if you can do it. 
if because not, you're aiming for the luxury rent so, luxury, right um if you don't mind sharing like mm-hmm. what's the uh, minimum rent you're you will you're getting on this unit yeah well so i started renting it before and i was worried with COVID and stuff so i did rent some of the rooms at 700 per month but 750 is really my floor like, like so, minimum. Yeah, minimum. And what's the maximum? Like what's highest? Uh, yeah. Well, if you're gonna do an on, like this one's 750 because there's no en suites. But oh, if I have an en suite, like I'll probably go 850, 900 wow. uh, per, per month for an en suite. And you have all rented out. Yeah, this is all rented out. And you can see we're still in insulation. School year doesn't even start until January. Uh, and like I said, I was telling Aditya, we were talking outside. I actually had multiple offers uh, for some of these rooms at 750, which was crazy. That tells me like, you know, students are still there. Yeah, and definitely. Students also prefer luxury Mm -hmm. because now they can focus on their studies you have your market right so it's really important you can go into the university website um, and find out their statistics and i can find exactly what the population is from each country international students domestic students and from that i can tell whose budget is what from the country they're coming from and the demographics of it so i can base my product to that so if i say okay you know i have these students coming from nigeria china and then domestic students and I can assign a problem, you know, a percentage of how many of those students will want luxury housing. I can get a ballpark of how many rooms we need uh, in the city. So it, it, it kind of caps you for building too. Makes sense. And um, so what do you, what are you seeing right now? Because, you know, we are pretty much in 2021, December, mm-hmm. November. Uh, what's your predictions on students uh, inflow to Windsor mm-hmm. or whole Canada? Yeah, I think it's going to be record enrollment. So we already, so St. Clair already announced their enrollment numbers. U Windsor has not yet. St. Clair hit uh, record enrollment. If you look across Ontario, that seems to be a trend. You have to remember guys. So the government of Canada's plan to save the Canadian economy is to raise the GDP through immigration, which is great. That's how we came. Aditya, you came the same way. Immigration's great. The way they're doing it though, is by letting international students get permanent visas for coming here. So the international student population is going to boom I think it's a huge opportunity. There will be a mixture of online, which is great, but the population is still going to go up. The demand for off-campus housing is going to go up. We're already at such a supply shortage. We got we got a long ways to go before we meet that. Love it, love it, man. Uh, so now you got this like six bedroom on the main floor mm-hmm. and and basement two bedroom, two three, three bedroom, bedroom, one bath. So unit. total nine bedroom nine and beds, uh, six bath or four baths. Four baths. So nine bed and four bath, which is pretty much one is to two ratio. Mm -hmm. Um, How many parkings do you have on this one? So this one, we have two parking spots in the rear, but the great thing about uh, Bridge Avenue is you can actually get two uh, street permits per unit. So that means I get four street permits for this building and then two in the back. So six parking spots for nine students. Oh, so that's more than enough technically. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so I already rented out. So they only needed three parking spots. So there was Mm -hmm. extra leftover. So tell us a little bit more on the numbers. Like how did you fund this deal? You know, how much, first of all, how much you bought it for yeah okay yeah so i'll go back so maybe we'll show them outside too but i bought the house that was next door um, and i did this right when the pandemic happened so it was a little bit scary um, <laughs> but i bought it for 265 believe it or not which is crazy because i split the lot scared. everyone was scared yeah i actually ended up buying another one on uh, california avenue as well and another one on askin during that time period <laughs> uh, which of all ended up being yeah, quite yeah. successful but so what i did was i bought it for 265 Maybe eight months later, once I split the lot and got my minor variance, I sold that existing house for like, I think it was 360 or 350. So you already made extra 100,000? Yeah, 90, 90. around okay. 90. Yeah, so I made about 90K off that and I got to keep the lot, which I already had a minor variance approved to build. So I got paid 90,000 for the lot. To have, to own the lot. To own the lot, yeah. That's so insane. no mortgage or anything on the lot, you own it. That, that's, a, that's a great strategy, yes. by the way, because you know, to buy a lot in this area mm-hmm. is at least 200,000. Yeah, well, for a small lot like that, yeah. And then now, like, the, the cost of land is so expensive. It's not even the cost of land. I'd buy it if it was. There's just no land. Everything yeah. has a house on it, right? So, and even if you buy it, you got to buy it with cash so that you will qualify for loan. Yes, that's one thing, guys, I want to tell you. If you're a beginning or beginner investor, new construction is very capital intensive. Okay, yeah. so I don't have JV partners, but this is one of the ones that I'd probably recommend doing a JV partner on because it costs so much upfront capital like a lot a lot a lot how much uh, um are you predicting that this project will cost you yeah so like just the construction side of things i'll probably be in around 450 uh keep in mind i am the builder on this so if you hire it out it's going to be more expensive yeah yeah so 450 for me uh what it's going to be worth is around 825 to 850 Mm -hmm. um so a little bit of a profit margin there for me but just a little bit yeah (laughs) just the 350,000 or 400 for for this one yeah just because the land was free right but if you think about it okay if i pay 250 for a lot your profit margin gets squeezed a little bit yeah the one thing i want to touch on on why construction is so capital intensive is 
when you buy land, the bank will finance the land for you, but you have to come 35% out of pocket. For okay. the land. For the land. Okay. So every 100000 that the land is worth, you have to give them 35000 Now, for construction, it doesn't work the same as when you get the keys of the house, you get the loan. For this, you have to get to lockup stage before you get your first draw. Lockup stage means it's been excavated, the foundation's been poured, and it's been framed in. So you're pretty much building a house just without the finishes before you get any money from the bank. Who's paying so, to get there? You have. Hold on. Uh, first of all, like, did you get a loan on this one? So construction loan, yes. So how how much did they approve you for the construction loan? So the construction loan got approved for much more than the construction cost just because yeah. there was a, a spread, right? Yeah, because you are also like the managing, right. Hmm, right. whatever, the project it's manager. It's important to know though that you don't get that construction loan until you hit lockup stage. So got what I mean it. by that is, so lockup, for example, on this one, took about $200,000 worth of money to get to lockup. Where does that $200,000 come from? The bank of Marco Agbaba, right? But if you're <laughs> if you're a new investor, you're not going to have 200k, and this is a smaller yeah. project. You know, for Randolph, for example, it's 750k to get to lock up. Yeah. So it's a very expensive sport. Is so you got to pay the money first for yes. doing the basic <laughs> um, until what stage? Lock up stage. So lock. what that means is we have to get it excavated, foundation framed, so the house is framed, mm -hmm. windows installed, and then so they're pretty much come back. the stage that we are in. Well, almost. this one is a little further because what you can't see behind this is all, all of the electrical's been done, the plumbing's been done, oh, okay. the HVAC's so been done. Before those, you can get those. Before those, you can get those, and that actually takes a long time. HVAC takes quite, quite a bit of time. To get so them. just to get an idea, right? Like you know, mm -hmm. this is more like if I have to build something yep. for myself. Mm -hmm. um, how much time and the money that you needed a friend before you get your first phase for so, the project yeah like so easy rule of thumb to do is 25 percent of the construction cost okay so if you know the construction cost is going to be one million dollars you know i'm going to need probably 250k sitting there just to get me to lock up and then on the other end is when you look at the land you know i'm going to need 35 percent yeah. of the land to, to put down to hold the land so it, pr pretty pretty expensive yeah that makes sense i get you know that's why if that's one of the reasons I failed in my first construction mm -hmm. project, that's exact same reason I didn't know that I need this much money. It's I, insane, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, so looking back, like, you know, especially if you're trying to get into new construction without having that, either having access to a partner who has money or by yourself, better do your due diligence and, you know, yes. get in. So this is your first ever project as a new construction. Ground up, yeah, this is my first ever ground up. Yeah, ground up, of course, project. of course. I know you have done the renovation project. Exactly, yeah. Um, so, how did you learn all this, like, you know, where the trades has to bring in, mm -hmm. all these things, like, how did you learn about this? YouTube. <laughs> okay. Seriously, YouTube. Really? So, here's the deal, guys. I, I looked at it very, so, when I was 17, 18, I decided I wanted to be a real estate developer, okay? It took me this long. I know people think, Margo, you're 26, yeah. that's so, to me, that's a long time. It took me almost 10 yeah. years to get here, right? Vision. So I thought about it really common sense, okay? I'm building a house. What does it take to build a house? What materials do I need? Mm -hmm. What's the process of it? What employees and what labor force do I need? It's not rocket science, guys. It's building a house, right? It's, it's pretty common and, and sense. And do you hire all the sub trades or mm -hmm. do you hire... Um, um, all sub all sub trades. Um, so if you hire a developer, they're, they're gonna take a cut, right? Yeah. And if it's your first build, maybe that's a better idea hire a construction management company um, and then bring them in and just learn off of that. But it's good that you brought that up. People don't realize development is really two separate businesses. Mm -hmm. Really, it's three separate businesses. The first business is real estate development, which means I'm taking the land, I'm repurposing the land. That's going yeah, into so the city, build. getting the minor variance, getting mm -hmm. the building permit. Then what typically happens is it gets passed off to a construction management company. That's a construction management company that oversees the construction. And then when it's complete, you hand it off to a property management yep. company that runs it. So I do it all in-house, but it's three separate businesses. Yeah, so as of now, you're jack of all. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do it all and that's the way I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna grow it that way. Yeah, that again, you know, that, especially when you're big, starting out, mm -hmm. right? Like that saves a lot of capital. Yep. And you know, you can start building that capital and when you're at a point where you can mm -hmm. hire someone, you know, to mm -hmm. manage all those, that totally makes sense. For yeah. me, like, you know, that's a great way to start. I wish I, someone, smarter person like you <laughs> told me like when I not smarter but no I mean at least you know I lost in my project I guys if you haven't seen that video I shared more details there but you know just exactly for the same reason I didn't look through all the steps like that's why I was like when you told your project is almost as this age I want to know 
Well, it's yeah. So another thing too is it, it is about the money, but it's also about the control. Like uh, I like to be able to control things. That's probably why I've never been a good employee and why I'm not an employee. <laughs> but so the control is big. Like for example, this project will be complete in five months. To build a new house in five months during uh, like the pandemic lockdown yeah. is pretty close to impossible. So that wouldn't have been able to be done if I hired a developer. So yeah, that's, that's another question actually I was able to ask. Like mm-hmm. so. When did you start it, the actual like uh, digging the ground? Yeah, I'd have to look at it because it's all uh, approximately it's all like a few project. months. Uh, how, yeah, like probably months, five th- months. three months ago. Yeah. Okay, and and what's your projection? How long it's going to take more? It's going to be done by the end of December. End so, of December, yeah, surely. Yeah, you got hundred percent. Yeah, you guys are coming in to see it with the insulation, but I also have drywall being delivered here. Once drywall, mudded tape, painted, then you're just installing cabinets, right. flooring. Yeah. You guys. A lot of the beginner investors probably know that part of the renovation yeah. project, right? So, so that's pretty much that straightforward. Mm-hmm. Got it, man. So, like, literally, you have the project from ground zero to, to within five months. Five months. Now, the problem is that the construction part is short. The long part is dealing with the municipality and the city. And if anyone from the city is listening, I'm sorry, yeah. but <laughs> it's got to be figured out, right? Yeah. So, it's it's way too slow. It takes probably close to a year to get your permit, oh, and then wow. you can build it in five months. So why is there a big housing shortage in Canada? That's why. It's, because it's like, so since you have cities. the lot for you to get the permit to build, it took one year. Yeah, well think about it. I bought this May of last year during yeah. the COVID pandemic. And, you started and I just process. started construction a few months ago. So you literally started the severance and everything mm-hmm. from the day one. Yeah, so it took me about 12, and I made a lot of mistakes guys because frankly, um, it was my first development. I didn't really know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. So originally I wanted to tear it down and build a double duplex. Oh, and then the okay. city started telling me I had to like pave the whole alleyway and do a lot of things. And what happened so, is it's really funny. I was actually looking at the survey and it said lot 30, lot 31. And I'm like, wait a second. This so is a separate, separate lot. Pin. They're separate lots. So I took it to the city to sever it and they said, no, they will not allow me to sever it. So oh. what happened was I got upset and I told my lawyer I wanted to sue the city. Oh, and my wow. lawyer said, Margo, that's a pretty dumb idea. But what we can do is we can split it legally without asking the city. So I split uh, okay. it through my lawyer and I brought it to the city and I said, now let's do the building permit. Let me show you guys the basement. Let's check it out. I have a little secret for you. Come in here. We got another unit. I snuck one more unit down here. So if you take a look, Ooh. <laughs> DT is seven feet tall. So, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm seven feet here. It's like, oh. no, so nine foot ceilings. Um, so I just thought for the basement, I wanted to seem as open uh, as possible. So you can notice over there too, I'll walk over here with you. Really large windows too, big ceilings. It does not feel like a basement down here. So that's really important. So where I'm standing guys right now is kitchen, living room. So we'll have living room, kitchen island, all quartz countertops built in fireplace. Uh, this will be the washer and dryer. I snuck it into the uh, kitchen for this one. So pretty much that's the kitchen and living. Yes. So and then the rest of everything is also, so you guys know how hard it is to construct during uh, this lockdown, the supply shortage. This panel was supposed to be all the way down to the end of the hall. We didn't have enough materials. There was not enough wires in Canada for me to do that. I have to bring it into here. Isn't that insane? That's crazy. There's no materials right now. It's insane. So this is kind of a hallway and then each bedroom will will sprawl off into here. And actually for the people that have seen my uh, project I did on Askin Avenue, uh, really similar, similar bedrooms uh, as I did over there. Good size, good size windows. It doesn't feel like basement at all. Yes. And one thing actually I want to bring up guys, something that I did. So usually when people do ADUs, they do do two separate HVAC systems. So what I did was with ADUs, you're capped at a thousand square feet. So I thought, I don't want to waste any space on an HVAC room. So what I did was, you'll notice how I had to put the ductwork under the 5 8 drywall. Reason for that is because I only have one HVAC room on the main yeah. floor that services both units. But I installed a shut off valve in the furnace system, which is like a thousand bucks so extra to do. Between. So they can control their own ah. temperature down here. Cause that's the one thing that you'd run into. But then that means I can get three bedrooms. Cause a lot of people are probably yeah. saying, how are you getting a three bedroom ADU? Because now pretty much you would have lost a bedroom if you would have done Definitely. separate ADUs. Yeah. So. And on Randolph, so the development I'm doing on Randolph, I actually have a three bed, two bath ADU. So the only way you can do that is by taking out the HVAC room. There's just yeah. not enough space otherwise, right? Yeah, that's a really good point because especially when you're focusing on student rental, for bedrooms. every bedroom is like bedrooms, giving you bedrooms. extra six, seven hundred grand. 750. 750, that's his minimum. So this is a bathroom in here. Also, one other thing I want to bring up as well, no bathtubs. You cannot get bathtubs within a reasonable time right now. So what I did was I actually ripped out the framing for the bathtubs and I said, F it, we're going custom. So they'll just be all custom showers, white marble, glass. Yeah, more expensive, but 
sometimes with construction, you're willing to pay a little bit extra on things because you need to get it done by the deadline. Yeah, man, love it. I, honestly, that's that's a great point. We'll, we'll catch up more details on that one on the next mm -hmm. video because or else this video will become too long. <laughs> uh, but other than that, man, I really wish you a best of luck and such an interesting project. I, I appreciate know many it. more to come. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you, guys.